All right, in 17.4, we're gonna talk first about immunodeficiencies, which are issues with the immune system. And then we will talk a little bit about cancers of uh, immune tissues, which we call lymphoid cancers. Uh, we're gonna talk primarily about um, what we call primary or secondary immunodeficiencies. Uh, and then we will describe several of them. We've talked about a few of them in the case studies, but I wanna point out where they are in the system. Again, it's not critical that that we know all of these, but I want to show you how um, many places that the immune system can have problems and how that can lead to uh, issues in terms of repeated infections. And then we'll talk about how our immune system actually helps prevent cancer or detect cancer, I guess is a better way to put it, and what happens when our immune system starts missing things and uh, cancers develop there. So let's dive into it. Uh, we have a case history here. Uh, we have Erica, her pregnancy went smoothly, but she did know from prenatal sonograms that her baby would be born with cleft lip and palate. Um, but those are easily correctable through uh, surgery. So she wasn't too worried. Um, after her child was born, they did blood tests and they found that they had low white blood cell counts. Um, and Further tests discovered that there were low T cells or no T cells there. Uh, obviously, we know the T cells, uh, the thymus is critical for their formation, so the doctors are going to check on the thymus in the baby. They were surprised because when they did a CT scan of his chest, they found no thymus in there. So the child is born without a thymus and thus can't make T cells. So that is not good. They did uh, some DNA tests because there are several causes of this. One of them is a common deletion on chromosome 22. So they did what's called fluorescent in situ hybridization or FISH, um, where you use fluorescent markers to check on different parts of the chromosome. So normally in chromosome 22, we can see this pink and then this green piece and then the rest of the chromosomes there. But in, uh, Silas, there is a deletion on chromosome 22, and this pink part is missing. So several genes are missing in this case. Uh, this is known as DeGeorge syndrome, and it can cause immunodeficiency and other birth defects, as we saw the cleft palate, and in this case, a uh, lack of a thymus. Um, so uh, it affects um, childhood development. This is not good. Without a thymus transplant, uh, the child would probably die before he was two years old. Uh, luckily, in this case, they were able to find a transplant, uh, got a matched donor, and the child is still alive. So this is, again, another one of those ways that such a small change can lead to huge uh, downstream effects in the immune system. So this is an example of an immunodeficiency, a disorder in which part of the person's immune system is missing or diminished. In this case, all of the T cells. It's a pretty big one. And this would be a case of a primary immunodeficiency, uh, something that has a genetic basis and manifests itself early in childhood. There are secondary immunodeficiencies that can be acquired at any age. We have uh, ones that can be acquired by infection, so HIV, which causes AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Um, we have immunosuppressive drugs, as we talked about. Several cancer treatments can suppress the immune system. Radiation therapy can do this. So uh, primary, you're born with it. Secondary, it is acquired along the way through life. There are different um, types of primary immunodeficiencies. We have some that affect T cells. Those tend to lead to intracellular infections, bacteria and viruses. Um, B cell infections that can lead to uh, capsule, encapsulated uh, bacteria uh, infections uh, because they have problems making antibodies. They have problems uh, doing the phagocytosis of these. Um, Problems with the phagocytes, problems with complement, these are all some of the things that can occur. And you might think this isn't that common, but it's estimated that about 1 in 2,000 babies are born with some form of primary immunodeficiency. Luckily, many of them are not life-threatening, but some of them are. Uh, and we know of more than 400 different types. Uh, many of them are in the B cells, which... Um, 
leads to uh, issues, but can be treated with antibiotics and immunoglobulin shots. Okay, so we're going to talk about this diagram. This diagram is very much like uh, this diagram that we've been looking at, right? On the left, we have the humoral side, the B cells, the plasma cells, the antibodies getting made. On the right, we have the cell mediated system with the cytotoxic T cells. We're going to talk about different locations where if there's a breakdown there, what it leads to. And you will notice the higher up the chart, the uh, error, or I guess um, the problem, the larger the consequences, I'm going to say, in terms of um, lack of immune system. So uh, we'll look at several of these. Again, this is just for general interest. Um, I know uh, people... Um, are always, you know, asking about these or interested in these things. So we're just going to talk about a few of them. Um, but again, it's not critical that we know everything about them. We're just going to introduce them here. Okay, so we've seen this one before. Severe combined immunodeficiencies or SCIDs. Uh, remember the bubble boy. So that is something up here at the top. And there are 12 different genes that we know that can lead to uh, SCIDs. And depending on which gene it is, there may be different severities here. Um, in this case, no T cells and no B cells are made. So basically the entire adaptive immune system is non-functional. Um, by six months of age, they're going to be developing recurring infections and could potentially die. So it's really critical here that they get a bone marrow transplant to treat this. And as we know, uh, with the bubble boy case, right, uh, that was problematic because he ended up getting a viral infection through that. So they're going to also treat in these cases with intravenous immunoglobulin. So they're going to like basically supplement antibodies from other sources uh, to them. It's not just antibodies, there's other immunoglobulin molecules in there, but um, it, they're going to try and pump up the immune system in any way they can. But to cure them, you really need a bone marrow transplant. So SCID is at the top. This is the most severe. We basically have no immune cells, adaptive immune cells being made. If we move down the T cell side of things, DeGeorge syndrome, as we just saw, uh, can be caused by um, mutations in several genes on chromosome 22 or that deletion there. Um, so it can lead to different de developmental defects like the cleft palate um, and the missing thymus in that case, um, uh, parathyroid glands as well. Um, so, but because this is affecting the T cell side of things, it's going to affect CD8 T cells, CD4 T cells. But we will still have um, some B cells made, but they're not going to get activated because they're lacking those helper T cells. So this can cause a lot of problems uh, on both sides, even though it's over here. But theoretically, they could still probably make some IgM. Again, though, this is fatal if uh, a thymus transplant is uh, not done. So a uh, very serious one here. MHC2 deficiency or the bare lymphocyte syndrome we talked about as well. That's affecting, um, in a lot of cases, the CD4 helper T cells. Um, the antigen presenting cells lack MHC2 and they're not able to activate the helper T cells. Um, so it's going to result in a lack of humoral and cell mediated immunity. Um, T cells can't properly be activated. There is no real treatment for this. Um, so again, all of these have been very serious. Luckily, the T cell disorders are much less common um, than the B cell disorders that we'll see. So we've talked about how important the helper T cells are. I think you can see that now by the severity of the disorders that come from it. Now we're going to look at the B cell immunodeficiencies, at least some of them. One of them is X-linked agamma globulemia, um, or it's called Bruton's disease. Um, and this comes from a mutation in a gene on the X chromosome. So that means that the inheritance pattern follows an X-linked recessive. We haven't talked about Mendelian genetics, but uh, this most often is going to affect males because males only have one copy of the X chromosome. So if they get a defective copy, they will have the disease, whereas females will be carriers. And if males uh, get an unaffected copy, 
they will not have the disease. So uh, in this one, uh, we have a lack of B cell development. So it's right up here at the top of the B cell um, development stage. And that means that little or no um, immunoglobulin is going to be made. Uh, it kind of screws up um, some of the development of the tonsils and other lymph nodes. Um, and the common effect of this is what we call pyogenic or pus producing infections of the lungs, sinuses, and skin infections. So these are primarily going to be extracellular infections. We still have the T cell side, the cytotoxic T cell side, so we can still deal with intracellular infections, just not the extracellular infections. Treatments for this include uh, those immunoglobulins and antibiotics, obviously. Um, so this one, uh, not as quite as life-threatening as some of the uh, T cell ones. We're moving down this way to what we call common variable immunodeficiency. Um, this is an adult onset one, and it's actually somewhat common, um, and we don't know the cause here, so I don't have a diagram to show you anything about how it works, is we don't really understand it. Um, the B cells look normal, they just don't switch class to make Ig, um, IgG or IgA or any of the other Ig molecules, they just make IgM. Um, so. This is going to affect the upper and lower respiratory tract in most cases. Again, not quite as severe as the T-cell diseases. If we go the other way, and one we've talked about, hyper-IgM syndrome, uh, if we have uh, defects in the B-cell activation, right? Like if the CD40 ligand is missing off of the uh, T-helper cells, they can't activate the B cells. So the B cells get the antigen signal and they can make IgM, but they never switch over to IgG or anything like that. So uh, again, monthly immunoglobulin, this one can be treated uh, with bone marrow transplants if the donor has identical MHC to the recipient. We'll talk about this in the next section. Um, again, pus forming infections, um, often spotted in the first two years of life, those recurring infections. Our final one um, is the most common primary immunodeficiency. We call it selective IgA deficiency. Um, patients lack IgA production. They have normal types uh, of other isotypes of antibodies. Um, again, we don't really know the cause here. Um, they're gonna suffer from recurrent mucosal infections, the ear, lung, GI tract, because IgA is expressed in those mucosal body parts. Um, also, these patients tend to have autoimmune diseases that accompany this. So we'll talk about autoimmune diseases in the next section as well. Okay, so uh, there's, a, there's a whole rundown of some of the common um, immune deficiencies. Obviously, there are secondary immune deficiencies like AIDS that uh, we've talked about as well. Uh, all of these, though, you can see the more parts of the immune system they affect, the more severe they are in terms of uh, whether the patient lives or dies. To finish this section off, we're going to talk about cancers of the lymphoid tissues and kind of cancer in general. So we know that generally cancer is not caused by an infectious microbe. Cancer is our cells with mutations. Uh, so one way to define cancer is a new growth of abnormal cells. Um, so tumors are masses of abnormal cells that can occur in tissues. Uh, tumors can be benign, so slow growing, self-contained, think skin moles, things like that. Or we can have malignant tumors, uh, tumors that grow very rapidly, out of control, and that can spread to other tissues. That's really what cancer is, right? That, that spreading, that metastasis is the, the tough part about it. You might not think about it, but our immune system actually is on the lookout for cancerous cells because it wants to eliminate them before they can spread and get out of control. So we have this process called immune surveillance, where the immune system finds and eliminates cancerous cells when they occur. This happens very commonly. So it's likely that your body has had cancerous cells develop, but it's dealt with them and gotten rid of them before they develop into something more severe that's ever detected. 
Many cancer cells have very weird cell surface antigens. They express weird stuff on the surface of the cell, and that can be recognized by the immune system. But if our immune system has problems, uh, then we have uh, problems detecting that. So when there are issues with the immune system, it can often lead to cancers going undetected and growing out of control. That could be things like AIDS. AIDS patients can develop cancers because their immune system is suppressed. Uh, people who have organ transplants, they often take immune suppressing uh, drugs. Um, or patients with primary immunodeficiencies, they can develop cancer much easier because they have uh, issues with their immune system. There are also cancers that can develop in the lymphoid tissues, as we call them, the uh, uh, organs and tissues of the immune system. There are some key terms here. I just want to throw them out there because you've probably heard them. So I want to make sure we define them so you know what they are. We have this term lymphoma. These are solid masses in lymphoid organs. So tumors in bone marrows, the thymus, lymph nodes, spleen, etc. Leukemia are malignant lymphoid cells found in circulation or in the bone marrow. So they're traveling around. Uh, plasmocytomas, these are cancerous plasma cells in the blood. Uh, they could be found in a single site or uh, multiple myeloma is cancerous plasma cells that are at multiple sites, like throughout the bone. Um, these are, uh, whenever we have anything that's circulating or in multiple locations, uh, that is when things become dangerous because they can move uh, to other locations. That's when cancer becomes dangerous. So it's very common actually for B cells and plasma cells to become uh, cancerous because they have very strong promoters in there. Um, they're making tons of antibody, so uh, they have to make lots and lots of mRNA that gets converted into protein. And what can happen is, is bits of the genome can get moved around, and if uh, genes that promote cell division or something like that move next to these very strong gene promoters, uh, cancer can develop and the B cells can grow out of control. So uh, here are some examples. Here's like a, a follicular lymphoma um, or some other examples. Uh, you can see that um, the cancerous cells are generally deformed in many ways. They have a enlarged nucleus and... Uh, can often be oddly shaped. Uh, so once they start growing out of control, uh, they're very easy to spot on a uh, slide and actually observation of tissue, so biopsy and observation of the tissue is generally how we observe cancerous cells, if you're trained in it. I'm, I'm terrible at looking at uh, animal cells. I'm much better at plant cells. They have the nice little cell wall that makes it easier for me to spot things. But Usually cancerous cells stand out if you're well-trained in them. Um, when this happens, uh, various, various things can happen. Um, some viruses can induce this. Like I said, uh, when we have bits of uh, genes moving around, apoptosis can be prevented. There's various causes for this, but B cells, uh, because of their uh, kind of strong uh, promoters that are in there. When genes move around in there, uh, bad things can happen in terms of cancer and, and uncontrolled growth. One of the interesting ways that we can detect cancers of the B cells and the plasma cells is actually by looking at the different antibodies that are being made. So about 1% of cancers in older patients are these uh, plasma cells. Um, and the bone marrow tumors, these are very, very painful. Um, one way we can detect it is by looking at the different types of antibodies. So uh, in here, we have a normal cell, and um, it is not really making anything uh, too different. There's some albumin that should be all in there, and then there's a nice even profile here. But when we look at a cancer cell, if we look at the uh, gamma peak, we can see it's making a ton of IgG here, and uh, when it shouldn't be. So it's making an exorbitant amount of it uh, kind of out of place. So we can actually detect B cell issues through strange patterns in the antibody um, production. 
that can lead to other antibodies not being made properly and can actually lead to immunosuppression. So uh, one weird type of antibody is being made, all others get kind of degraded and stuff like that. So uh, your immune system can be degraded in this case. Okay, uh, there's a lot of stuff in there. Again, just mainly general interest stuff. Um, we talked about different types of immunodeficiencies, T cell and B cell deficiencies. Uh, and then we talked about cancers of the lymphoid tissues. Uh, obviously, right, our immune system, very important in detecting cancer and dealing with it. And when we have immune compromisation, um, then we can end up with cancers developing. Okay, in the final chapter, we will talk about autoimmune disorders and transplants.